Hi there, this is Matt Allington. I had an interesting question from someone who's read my book, Supercharged Power BI, and he was asking, what would be a good way to take this data on the left, which is, say, a list of dates with a value, and build out the data so that I have one row for every single date. And so you can see here from the 12th, the quantity is 10, and the final result needs to be 12th, 13th, and 14th with 10. On the 15th, it changes through to 8, and on the 23rd, it changes through to 12, and so on. So this is my sample data. There's various ways to solve that, but today I'm going to show you how to do it using Power Query. Okay, so the first step to solve this problem is to create a list of dates that is inclusive of the start date and the end date. So basically, I'll, in this sample data, I want a list of dates starting from the 12th of April through to the 23rd of April. Okay, so the next thing I need to do is to get access to the first date and the last date so that I can use these things within um, the next steps. So because I'm going to use these uh, the first date and the last date inside another query, I really need to branch this query at this point in time. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to reference the original one. Now I'm going to say keep top rows one. That guarantees that I've only got the minimum date. And now I'm right click, drill down, and that gives me access to the first date. So I'm going to call this query min date. Now just for um, some, a shortcut here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little bit of code hacking and I've clipped the first n. So let me duplicate this to take a straight copy and see whether I could work out how to do this. So let's try last last end there we go so this time I'm changing this load of line of code to give me the last date and now I'm extracting the date and then this becomes the max date okay so now I've got the minimum date and the maximum date I'm set both of these so that they don't load and in fact I'll set this one not to load as well so now what I want to do is create a list of dates all dates starting from the 12th of April through to the 23rd of April. Now I happen to know that there is a function that will do this called list.dates and it's a little bit of a confusing function so uh, the IntelliSense doesn't seem to work here. Let me show you. If I create a new query, blank query and I go equals list.dates the IntelliSense is quite good. It tells me what it does but when I try and use the IntelliSense, it doesn't actually tell me what the syntax is. And so I'm not able to use this. So instead I'm going to go back to my tried and tested hash shared. This will give me a list of all functions. I'll turn that into a table. And then I will search for list.dates. And let's have a look at the syntax for the function. And as it turns out, it takes a start date, a count of how many days, and a step. And so we actually need to use this duration function here to specify the step. And in fact, we're going to use the duration function to work out um, how many days there are between the two dates. So let's see if we can work this out. So what we're going to do, um, I know the syntax now, so I'm just going to delete these steps. And I'm going to go, first of all, I need to know the duration. So that will be the max date, subtract the min date. Let's have a look what that gives us. And that's giving us 11 days. Notice it's in this day format. And so we need to extract the actual days as an integer. So that's duration dot days, open bracket. You can see the IntelliSense is not quite working there. Max date minus min date. Let's see whether that turns it into an integer. Now we have the number of days. And so I'll call this total days. OK, so now I've got the start date, I've got the max date, I've got the total days. I'll switch off the load. Now I'll create another new query. 
and it'll be a blank query and we'll go equals list dot dates we now know the syntax the starting date is min date the duration is total days and the step will be hash duration one zero 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 so that all looks good and now we've got a list of dates starting from the minimum date through to the max date now notice that actually this is one day short so my total days needs to be plus one of course if you subtract two numbers you need to add one if you want to be inclusive okay so now I can turn that into a table and now I have a table containing all of my dates and with this table I can merge this table with my original table of data. So I'm going to go merge queries and I'll merge it with my data. I'm going to join it on the date column, left out of join. And of course this is only going to match where there is um, a number. So you'll see the match on the 12 but there's nothing on the 13. Interesting, these are not in order, so I need to sort this first. So 12, 13, 14, and then it switches to 8. Now I've got this, I can just use the fill down command. So fill down, and it populates the value with the item in the list. And so this is my final output. So there you have it. I've taken the table of data on the left and I've turned it into a table as shown on the right. If you'd like to learn more about Power Query, why not sign up for my online Power Query course? It's got more than seven and a half hours of instructional videos just like this, which will help you be a superhero with Power Query.